Hello and welcome to today's lab. Within your BCL session, navigate to the Government 300 Blackboard course webpage. And along the left-hand column menu, choose Data. And under the full versions of the Pollock data, choose the State's data set. And then choose Open, and this will start a session of SPSS. So today we'll be talking about correlation and linear regression. From the t-test and ANOVA lab videos, you should be familiar with the use of interval or ratio dependent variables. With regression, we will analyze interval or ratio level dependent and independent variables. As Professor Daigle has mentioned in the lecture videos, linear regression is an extremely common data analysis tool in the social sciences. One reason for its popularity is that it allows us to generate relatively precise predictions for our dependent variable based on values of the independent variable. Thus, it is a predictive model that can tell us how much unit change we can expect in our dependent variable for each unit change in our independent variable. So let's get started. We've already opened up the state's data set, so let's theorize about a relationship that we can test using regression. Remember, we are looking for interval or ratio dependent and independent variables. And many of the variables in the state's data set are interval or ratio because states are the respondents. And the data is often aggregate data. For instance, the percentage of people from New York that support stricter gun control, or the percentage of women legislators in a given state. So in our case, suppose we're interested in explaining variation in the level of state cigarette tax. And upon further theorizing, you wonder if variation in this tax is related to the level of cigarette consumption in that state. So in this case, your dependent variable is the level of state cigarette tax, and your independent variable is cigarette consumption in packs bimonthly. So to get a picture of how this variable is distributed, let's run a frequency table. Along the top hand menu, click Analyze and descriptive statistics and slide over and choose frequencies and sort your variable names alphabetically and choose the cigarette tax rate place that into variable pane and click OK. So you'll notice that our total number here is 50, one observation for each state and that the ob observations range from about seven cents all the way up to about two dollars and fifty eight cents. So suppose we hypothesize that states with higher levels of cigarette consumption are more likely to have lower taxes than states with lower levels of cigarette consumption. And you may theorize that if the political power of smokers is greater relative to non-smokers in a given state, state cigarette tax increases are much less likely. Now that we have our two variables, let's get a simple picture of covariation between these two variables, or the extent to which observations of these two variables move together. To do this, along the top menu, go to Analyze, and go all the way down to Correlate, and since we're looking at two variables, choose Bivariate. and select your independent and dependent variable and place both of them in the variables pane. Cigarette tax and cigarette consumption. And make sure correlation coefficients, uh, Pearson's is checked. And two-tail test of significance is checked. And click OK. So in the output, note that the correlation coefficient, or Pearson's R, between the same variable is always 1. Between these two variables, there is a coefficient of negative 0.4. The negative sign indicates a negative relationship, meaning that as the independent variable increases, the dependent variable decreases. And this is just as we hypothesized. You'll also notice that SPSS gives us a sig value, or p-value, so from this, we can tell that the higher the cigarette consumption in the given state, the lower that state's cigarette tax will be. But we want to understand this relationship in more detail. Specifically, we want to know how much variation is explained and how much change to expect in our dependent variable for each unit change in our independent variable. 
We also want to know if our relationship is significant. For this, we'll use linear regression. So minimize out of your output window here. And we'll go back up to analyze. And this time we'll go down to regression. Slide over and choose linear. And sort our variables. And we'll place cigarette tax rate into the dependent box and cigarette consumption into the independent. And then we'll go up here and click on statistics. And you want to make sure your estimates, your model fit, and your R squared change are all checked. Click continue. And then run the analysis. All right, so SPSS generates four tables in your output. I want to draw attention to the second one, the model summary. In the second table, you'll notice that we get both an R and R squared. Recall from Professor Daigle's lecture videos that R squared gives us the exact amount of variation explained in our dependent variable by our independent variable. In this case, with an R squared of 0.16, 16% of the variation in state cigarette taxes is explained by level of cigarette consumption. Next, let's look at the fourth table. This is the coefficient summary. Here, note the B column, or beta column. This is the beta coefficient, or simply the slope of the regression line. Recall that with regression, the beta coefficient tells us how much change we expect in our dependent variable for each unit change in our independent variable. The first number in the beta column is the y-intercept, labeled in SPSS as constant. This is the value of y when x equals 0, in our case 1.69. The second value in the beta column is the slope of the regression line. So in our example, the slope of the regression is negative 0.081, again, a negative relationship which translates as, for each additional pack smoked on average, we would expect the tax in that state to decline by a bit more than 8 cents. Now that we have our R squared and beta, we need to determine significance. For regression, there are two measures of significance. The significance of the model, which is our overall significance, and the significance of each variable in the model. In our case, this is just the one independent variable. For the model, SPSS provides an F statistic in the summary box with an associated p-value of 0.004. Also, the coefficient of our independent variable must be significant for us to reject the null hypothesis. This tests whether the slope is statistically different from zero. So moving down to the coefficients table, in the T column, it'll tell us the t statistic for our independent variable and its associated significance. In this case, 0.004. So we would interpret the results of our hypothesis test as follows. The model is significant at 99% confidence. The independent variable level of cigarette consumption is significant at 99% confidence. A one unit increase in packs of cigarettes consumed bimonthly corresponds to about an eight cent decrease in cigarette taxes in that state. And 18% of our variation is explained in cigarette tax rates by level of cigarette consumption. Thus, we can reject our null hypothesis and claim statistical support for our research hypothesis that the higher the average level of cigarette consumption in a state, the lower that state's cigarette tax will be. Be sure to do the exercises for bivariate regression before moving on to the lecture videos on multivariate regression and control. After that, go on to the next lab video.